Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Welcome to, and if you're joining us from the beginning, the Dawah Conference of Ikna. So my name is Yasser Aslam here from the Gain Peace office in Chicago. So without further ado, I do want to let you know for this program, the title of it is Dawah Reimagined. I did really want to get that panel discussion going because it's amazing that we have people from everywhere talking. Um, now, I want to say one of the main reasons and goals for this conference is to inspire the world, not just the attendees here in the United States, to join the Dawah efforts in their communities. And at a national level, we're requesting attendees to sign up to volunteer. So again, if you would like to go to ikna.org slash conference or slash volunteer slash donate, any of these things, we highly encourage that. Also, the great work that ICNA's Gain Peace team, Why Islam, and Embrace have been doing nationally, locally, every region that is possible, state to state, all 50 states, trying to get coverage, inshallah. Like I said, the cell phone signal, eventually it'll be a dawah machine that you will have 5G better than that. You'll have direct connection to your Lord. Anybody who wishes to get anything about Islam, right? All of it being streamlined, whether it's dawah training for Muslims, outreach projects uh, projects for non-Muslims, and follow-up for new Muslims, any of that, inshallah. You know, I would like to encourage all of you to please, you know, um, consider these things and volunteer. So, inshallah, now I, I, I did want to bring everybody else onto the stage uh, right here, inshallah. And um, I want to have all of our speakers, Ali Dawa, Professor Mustafa, and Dr. Sabil, Let's all come up here and let us, um, you know, get this round table. It's the Islamic circle of North America. I wish we could have a round table here, but this is as good as, as it gets, alhamdulillah. So we have- Brothers, how are you? Wa alaikum wa everyone. MashaAllah. It's an honor to meet you, MashaAllah. Correct. Of you. And all of this work, um, I actually want to double check. I want to just check the 877Y Islam number. I want to actually just do a thing. Uh, I know that Game Piece also has 800 662 Islam. I actually was trying to do some re research forensically, like which one was there, how long have they been there. SubhanAllah, on this side of the planet, in this hemisphere, you know, these numbers have been active and running. We've had staff, you know, taking these calls 24 7 for decades now. SubhanAllah. So again, anyone out there, every Muslim out there, I want them to know that these numbers should be memorized. 800-662-ISLAM, 877-Y-ISLAM. We should be able to say the numbers. Anyone out there who's watching, inshallah, to make that effort. Um, now, did we want to get to some questions first from the comments? Or did you uh, actually, um, I want to throw a little discussion out there as well, too, for you guys. Um, let me see if, if we're going to see any of them. But now, there's two awesome things I want to mention that are happening. Um, and I will start with uh, Professor Mustafa from New Jersey. You know, brother Hijazi, what's what's new in your area? What's what's something that you would like to blast on a national or international level? Well, um, one thing that we're looking to launch in the very near future is a national Dawa Academy. I'm not sure if um, the you know everyone watching may have heard of of the National Dawa Academy. Basically, it's a grassroots project that was um, initiated with just a pilot launch uh, a few months ago. And the pilot launch, alhamdulillah, we had about 800 plus uh, registered students. And the National Dawah Academy is basically uh, an academy where you can take piecemeal courses, you can take intensive courses on uh, many, uh, a variety of different vari uh, various uh, Dawah topics, including, for example, as you can see there in the flyer, well, we have three levels, alhamdulillah, but, but the first level is just like an intro, the himmata dawah, the importance of dawah, intro to dawah methodologies, the fiqh of dawah, usul of dawah, intro to comparative religion, a very important topic in the dawah, of course, many prophets, one message, intermediate le level, uh, we have, for example, a course on emotional intelligence in the field dawah, we have one on... Um, Alhamdulillah, many different topics, as you can see there, auth authenticity of the Qur'an. We have uh, topics on Christological controversies and advanced section there, uh, on atheism and evolution, uh, logical da'wah, where we um, talk about logical fallacies. So many uh, philosophical, theophilosophical uh, courses that will be offered, inshallah. The launch date 
will be on January 1st of 2021. It's fully virtual, fully online, and the program is um, in progress. It's in WIP. Work in, it's a work in progress, and the course catalog is currently being constructed. So there's a lot of great things to come, inshallah. If you're interested, simply just register. You have the link there. You have the QR code. And um, alhamdulillah, like I said, uh, the database of, of students just continues to grow. So that's what's been most um, active and relevant right now here on the New Jersey side. We're taking it to the national level and we're very excited so that we can bring Islam and um, Muslims out to both rural areas and the large cities where we can convey Islam and make it available to the common folk, inshallah. Jazakumullahu khairan for sharing that, Professor Mustafa. And actually, um, also, very simply, all of us out there, even if you, first of all, if you're passionate about Dawah, please follow all of our social media for Gain Peace, for Why Islam. There's a lot of content being put out every single day, every mm. single week. The Peace Talk, amazing articles on Why Islam's website. And um, Dr. Sabil, um, uh, what's something that we've all been working very, very hard at for months? Right, right. Alhamdulillah. So on behalf of Gain Peace, uh, we have a... Quran campaign that we will be launching inshallah very soon. So there would be a lot of videos and brochures. There would be neighborhood projects, national projects. It would be coming up. Uh, a flyer videos would be about to be launched. So look out for it. Go to the Gain Correct. Peace website. Go to the social media handle of Gain Peace inshallah. Correct. And subhanAllah, all of you out there, literally your clicks make a difference. When you see something awesome, when you see that animation about the Quran that's going to come out, like it, share it. Put it on your wall. My advice to anybody and everybody watching, especially here in the United States, we, so many of us went to school and most of our colleagues and our friends are non-Muslim. Anytime you post a status on Facebook, please put the English translation if there's any Arabic words. Anytime you see something good on our social media, be that person who's posting those things. Don't be shy. Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and all the prophets of God were those people who people would deem annoying kept talking about one God, one creator, once, uh, you know, the, uh, like, so please, anyone out there, please don't be shy. We are people who have made our existence and our passion to do this work full time. Everybody, every Muslim should be a part time Da'i. So yes, sir, there are a few it's... comments or questions on the sure. chatting. If you want yeah. to take it quickly because time is running out. Correct. Um, I, I think I have the, if um, our, our back end brother, brother, if they there's, have there's, show there's one, comments, there's... I would like to see. There's one from Andrew, I think it's very important. And by the way, uh, Dr. Sabil, you said my microphone was on mute. You said, how are you? I was, I was, I was replying, but it was on mute. I realized, oh, yeah, okay, I'm okay, how are you? hope you're well, inshallah. Uh, yeah, it. Dr. Sabil, there's an important question on, by Andrew. Do you want me to read it for you? I can go ahead. Yes, go ahead. Let's go for it, inshallah. So, so, he's saying, so he's saying, what Christians tell me on the other hand is that because God knew we could not be good enough, he provided the way through Jesus Christ the quran even supports this maybe you would want to touch up on this so like can you uh, can you display that on the screen anyone okay. the admins yeah okay so it's a bit i went a bit further up because people were saying andrew andrew's answer so, oh there you go yeah there you go okay go ahead. okay what the christians tell me on the other hand is that because god uh, knew could not be good enough the quran even supports um, so um should, I, should I explain did you understand Right, right. You know, is he replying to some other comment over here? No, is it no, part of his right? I think what he's saying is that I think Andrew might be a Christian or, or someone that's searching. He's saying that because he believes Christians tell him that because as human beings, we can't be good enough for God. That's the reason why God sent Jesus to die for our sins. What does Islam say? Okay. So, Allah, there's countless videos. We can even just link them right now. Dr. Sabil and I have done live shows. We've answered this question in many episodes. In 20 minute, 30 minute quick episodes, and we're live. So, Brother Andrew, we invite you to do so. And again, I want to say we have lots of things. I want to just, if I could, I would just link them right now. But go ahead, Dr. Sabil. I feel like this person is just. Right, quickly, then the brothers can add to inshallah. You know, it's important that Allah, God, has made us fallible human beings. We commit sins. But then Allah has given us the opportunity to ask for forgiveness, and He can show His mercy and forgiving nature to us. So in Islam, we have that connection as a fallible human beings that he promised to forgive all the sins except one sin, which is to commit partners with him. So any sin a person may have, Allah can forgive. We need to approach him directly. No one has to be sent down 
son of God or mediator or any other sacrifice, Allah can forgive us directly. Secondly, there is a precedent for this even in the Old Testament. In the book of Jonah, when people of Nineveh, when they committed the sin, rebel against the prophet, Jonah, peace be upon him, they repented directly to God. There was no mediator. They were fallible human beings and God forgave them even according to the Old Testament. So it's important. In Islam, it's a rational faith. It's a faith of personal accountability. Allah is a loving, merciful, uh, merciful God. No one has to die for us. Allah can forgive us, inshallah. Alhamdulillah. Jazakumullah khairan. Um, Professor Mustafa, would you like to add anything? I know at 4.30 um, we might have our next session. But yeah, just very, very briefly. I mean, Andrew uh, looks like he's uh, referring to uh, Surah Al Imran, chapter 3, uh, verse 55 to 57. So, those verses are talking about um, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that I shall purify you, I shall raise you and purify you, referring to Isa ibn Maryam. And this isn't a problem theologically, um, obviously, for Muslims, and nor in no way or sense does it uh, claim any sort of divinity to Jesus. Uh, Jesus, as we know in the Islamic uh, discourse, is a prophet of God. We find that he's a prophet even in the biblical context. For instance, in Luke's Gospel and also Matthew 21, 11, it says that the crowds answered, this is Jesus of Nazareth, a prophet uh, from Galilee. So we accept Jesus as a prophet of God, a mighty messenger of God. Um, but theologically, that's as far as we go when it comes to Jesus. So we invite Andrew to learn about the Islamic uh, perception of who Jesus, whom peace be upon, was the historical Jesus as well uh, as you'll find uh, throughout history. I'll let Ali Dawa, inshallah, if you want to add a quick point there. Inshallah. I just want to add something quickly because it's very important. This concept adds, it goes, this is the pathway to shirk, uh, which is associating partners to God. Because the Prophet ﷺ told us that Allah said, if mankind was not to sin, I would destroy them and bring forth another nation that will sin and repent. Now, somebody might come and say, does, does God want us to sin? No, he's saying he knows that you're not going to be perfect. But the difference between Christianity and Islam is because we have this dialogue and a lot of Christians claim that, you know, God is the God of the Bible is more loving. We say in this very angle, not really, because if that's the case, in the, in the Bible, God is saying, I require blood sacrifice. You have to give me blood sacrifice. Islam says, nobody needs to die. I don't need blood sacrifice. All Allah is saying, if your sins were to reach the mountains and the skies, I will forgive every single one of them as long as you don't associate partners. So because as human beings, with our logic, we think we're not good enough. Well, Allah is saying, I know whatever you do, like even we are going to enter paradise by the mercy of God, by the way. Yeah. This is, this is Allah is by Allah's mercy because there's a hadith of a person who will come to Allah on the day of judgment and say, I want to go to paradise with my good deeds. Allah says, okay, let's put your eye and let's put your good deeds. And when they weigh it, they realize the eye outweighs. So the man says, look, oh Allah, I made a mistake. Please put me in paradise by your mercy. So what we understand, brothers and sisters, from this is, and Andrew as well, is that what God is saying, look, yes, you're sinning, but you have a Lord that's all forgiven. All you have to do is repent to me alone. And that is the beauty of Islam. Correct. I don't want to take any more time. Alhamdulillah, we will have, uh, there's another session starting. And I would like to encourage anybody and everybody, no matter where you are, age, if, you're, if you are able to donate, please donate. You see the billboards across the country. As people drive by, they call the number. We see the spikes in the calls of people coming in asking about Islam. We see literally every single letter in the Game Peace Prison Dawah program, we reply to individually. The stuff is free. We wow. send out Qur'ans along with Dawah material free, subhanAllah. And wow. it needs our support. If you're in the East Coast, please either support YSM, go physically there and volunteer. If you're here in the Chicago land area, Game Peace. And any youth watching right now, you we need you. There, We literally will make internship positions for you. We need social media managers. We need people to spread. Not everything that we can do, it's the staff is not enough. We do, we're doing this full time, it's still not enough. The demand for da'wah, especially now in our COVID times in 2020, has exploded, has increased twofold, fourfold, fivefold. It's moved up so much. We're all, we're all at the, like, we're doing all the best that we can, subhanAllah. Every single person out there, Brother Ali, you as well too, you guys are putting in 40, 60, 80 hours worth of work and there's still work to be done. So please, the volunteers out there, every like, every share is going to make a difference. Inshallah, wouldn't you like to have someone else enter into Islam and you keep getting those deeds? It's an investment opportunity for all of us to line our deeds, inshallah. Um, 
there's uh, there are some more questions. Um, if you want to display them onto the screen, we want to you know see if we can. Zakmalo Khairan for our next people kind of giving us a few minutes here. Um, anything else, brother? Um, brother Muhammad, any? Are, are we gonna go ahead and wrap up this discussion about Dawa reimagined? All of us, Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, wherever we may be, spread the efforts. These this material is free. Wherever you are in a nursing home, if you're watching this anywhere else, Muslims are watching this. Please share this. This might be internal, but we have content that we're putting out that's meant for non-Muslims, new Muslims. So please do share, support. Um, any more questions? Are we going to get the... There is one question about uh, how to break the ice. Right. It's very simple. You get ice and you start breaking it. <laughs> there you go. That's the way. <laughs> don't use your teeth to chew ice though. That's not good. No, that's don't not do good that, please. <laughs> It's getting, it's getting cold in the UK now, so Ali, you probably sorry, be able sorry. to make I've ice got, for I've, us. I've got some dead jokes I'm working on, but, you know, and it made you laugh, so that's exactly. enough. <laughs> so a, a quick way, the sister who asked the question, is that, you know, breaking the ice or sharing Islam should just uh, be a natural flow in the conversation. So one of the ways that I do usually, suppose if I'm meeting a neighbor for the first time, if I move to the neighborhood, I may share with them, you know, about my family, the case, maybe the place I work after I have comfort level, then I will ask them the question, which, what church, which church do you go to? When you ask the question, they may ask you back the question, uh, which church or which mosque that you go to? So sometimes by asking the questions, it's not that I'm too much interested in their answer. Yes, I am in one way, but I want them to ask a counter question, then I can explain Islam. So a simple method that I have is A, B, C, D. A for attract, either by something you have or by a character or by what you say. B is to build the bridges by speaking about some social events, some things which are in common. C speaks, C, once you build a rapport with A and B, then you do the commonality when it comes to theology. C is for commonality. Then D, once you do all of the A, B, C, no, that's when you deliver the message, inshallah. Okay. Now I will bless all of us and help us to continue with this. I'm getting the red flag. And Alhamdulillah, Jazakumullahu Khairan, um, Professor Mustafa Hijazi. Jazakumullahu Khairan, Brother Ali from the UK. Assalamu alaikum, you know, Dr. Sabil. You know, great thank you from us too. And again, uh, one of our main goals of this conference is to inspire attendees to join the Dawah efforts. So, gain peace. Why Islam? Embrace, revert support. Any of these things, please. Two things that are coming up: the uh, the National Dawa Academy. If you're interested in becoming a Dai, please look into that. Go to ikna.org for more information. And also, there's going to be the Quran campaign on the ground. There's going to be mailers sent out. There's new material going out. So please share those videos. Literally, inshallah, the next couple of days. And with that, inshallah. Jazakumullahu khairan. If anybody wants to end off with a dua, just about 30 seconds. Let, let's also support uh, Brother Ali's uh, Salam Institute. Salam right? Correct. Right. 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 We, we are definitely, we spoke about Ustad Hijazi as well there. We're definitely got some surprises coming very soon. Inshallah, yeah. We're working collaboratively, inshallah. We have some great things coming. And Ustad Sabir, inshallah, if you come to the UK, please let us know. Inshallah. I would like to take you to some nice restaurant. Alhamdulillah. Oh, looking forward. جزاك الله خيرا سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك ونشهد الله إله إلا أنت ونستغفرك ونتوب إليك السلام عليكم ورحمة الله everyone جزاك الله خير السلام عليكم ورحمة الله